Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. We'll be looking tonight at verses uh, 21 through 35. In uh, verse 21 of Matthew chapter 18, it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And then he throws out a number. Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which uh, would uh, take account of his servants. And when he had begin, begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. And his wife, and children, and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down, worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me, that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Let's bow our heads for another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, again for you allowing us to be gathered in your house tonight, Lord, and uh, to look at a part of your word. And Lord, as we think about what we've just read here in your word, we I am so thankful for the forgiveness that you give to us. And Lord, uh, when we get to listen to things that you've done for us and how we ought to be giving it to others, forgiveness has to be a part of that. And Lord, uh, I just pray, Lord, that each one of us would, con would consider this as we think about these things tonight, how that you paid a, a debt you didn't owe you paid it for us. And Lord, uh, we ought to be forgiven as forgiving to others as you are to us. And Lord, uh, again, have your way in our lives tonight. And if there's one that's lost and undone without you, just ask you to save them before it's everlasting too late. I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you look with me back up to verse 21, Peter had a had a question for the Lord, and uh, he asked, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? You know, and I, I've shared with you uh, several times through the years about a fellow that was talking to me. He was the same guy that told me not to, uh, that I didn't need, need to preach on sin anymore, and you know how I didn't uh, follow his advice on that. But his other thing was this. He said, you know, if somebody wrongs me, they can wrong me one time. 
But after that one time, I can let them have it. And I was like, I believe you've left out, you know, you've left out part of the Bible there. Because Peter even asked, seven times? Is that, is that enough? Is that what I need to do? And J. Vernon McGee adds this. Uh, Peter thought he was being big here because when he said this, because two or three times, according to the rabbis, would be all that you had to forgive somebody. So he thought he was giving just a little bit, maybe doubling it up or more, tripling it up or somewhere in that neighborhood, when he said seven times. And I don't think he was expecting the Lord's response. Verse 22 says, Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Four hundred ninety times. Four hundred ninety times. I hope that we can agree on this. If we if it's getting up to four hundred eighty, Marty's done lost count. Maybe you hadn't. Marty's done lost count. I think the idea behind this is we keep forgiving. I don't know about you. I want the Lord to keep on forgiving me. I don't want him to stop. Lord knows we done passed 490 with me. But I want you to look and think about these things that the, this story that he tells here starting in verse number 23. He says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, let's, uh, let's try to wrap our mind around this because the more folks I read about this, the, the different, more different numbers I got. I'm going to throw out a few numbers to you. What he owed, according to J. Vernon McGee, was about $12 million. That's according to J. Vernon McGee. According to uh, another group, another writer, it was 160,000 years of wages that he owed. According to another group of writers, the proportion of what was owed him compared to what he owed was one to one million two hundred fifty thousand. And uh, no matter who we read, no matter what we figure and we do, let's just say this: he owed more than he could ever pay. And think about that for just a minute. We owed a whole lot more than we could ever pay. We had a sin debt that needed to be paid for. Uh, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And uh, if you turn over with me to Hebrews chapter 9, Verse number 27. I got an invitation, I think this morning, and uh, it asked me if I wanted to put it on my calendar. So, yeah, hey, yeah, if I can get it on the calendar, get notified something's fixing to happen, maybe I won't forget it. And uh, I never had one of them paper calendars that would jump up and slap me upside the head and say, hey, you got something to do today, but... Every now and then, my calendar on my phone will not slap me upside the head, but at least uh, show up on my watch where I can see it. But verse 27 of Hebrews chapter 9 tells us about an appointment that each one of us have. And that appointment is, number, first of all, with death. And then it, there's an appointment that comes after that. So... Uh, Hebrews 9, verse 27, As it is appointed, and it and as it is appointed unto man once to die. 
But after this, the judgment. Let's don't stop there. A lot of times we, we get verse 27 and we go on. Look at verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. It should have been me. It should have been you. It should have been everybody down through the ages. But Christ died for each one of us. Who did he die for? The sins of the whole world. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. If you turn over with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, last verse in that chapter, verse 21. Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He, he writes to us. He says, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, For he hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. He took my sins, took your sins. Now, uh, you may have heard sermons on this. There were seven sayings the Bible records that Christ said on the cross as he hung there for me and you. And one of them was, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And most commentators believe this. As you read about that, those verses, what he said there on the cross at that particular time, that God the Father turned his back on God the Son because God can't look on sin. But whose sin was on him? He had no sin. My sin was. And great debate been down through the years who... who who crucified Christ? Some people say the Jews had it done. Some people say it was Roman soldiers that did it. I'm guilty. He died on that cross for me. So he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. One last place we're going to turn, then we'll go on back to over to Matthew. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 1. Now, this first word, you might not use it at your house. My granddaddy used it at his house. And uh, as I drove his Super C farm all through that gate one day, uh, Ho! I, I kind of got the idea if that meant stop. So, uh, we spent the next little while repairing the fence that I just ran through. So stop. Everyone who thirst, come you to the waters, and he that hath no money, come you buy and eat. Now, how can we buy if we have no money? Because the debt's already been paid. This young man was called before the king and owed a debt that everybody that heard Jesus that day understood. There ain't no way that guy's going to be able to pay that back. 10,000 talents? And however you want to uh, calculate that up, it was more than a lifetime that he could earn. So, Come you to the waters, he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money, without price. It's done been paid for. So if you look back with me in Matthew 18, they brought these that had debts to the king. And one came that owed him 10,000 servants over a lifetime of earnings. And this is what he said. 
He didn't have nothing to pay. Verse 25, Matthew 18. His Lord commanded him to be sold. Not only him, but his wife, his children, all that he had and payment was to be made. Now friends, each one of us was, as it were, placed upon an auction block. And sold to the highest bidder. Christ with his life. With his precious blood. Was the highest bidder. We had a debt. We had to pay it. It had to be paid. Christ paid that for us. Look at verse 26. The servant therefore fell down. And worshipped him. Saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I'm going to pay you all. J. Vernon McGee says, he must have been going to make an installment plan. Because he didn't have it. This morning we read in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, that because Christ laid down his life for us, we ought to also lay down our life for him. It's just a reasonable service. And this servant here was going to be paying that debt, so he said, the rest of his life. <clears throat> I want to ask you a question. If you and I are old, was over our heads in debt, and somebody paid that off for us, how would that lead us to treat others? How would that lead us to treat others? The, and remember what the question was at the very beginning. Lord, when somebody sins against me, how many times do I need to forgive him? Seven times? And I believe what literally Jesus told him was, no, it's a lifetime. Because as we've been forgiven, we ought to forgive others. So when he bowed before the, the king there and worshipped him, saying, Lord, I, be, be patient. I'll, I'll pay you all, which was an impossibility. But with compassion, he loosed him, forgave him the debt, verse 27 says. We serve a loving God. who loved us enough to give his only son. That we believe in him, we wouldn't perish, but we'd have everlasting life. So, this man leaves debt free. Forgiven. And again, uh, J. Vernon McGee says the total was $12 million. Other writers say it was 160,000 years wages that this man owed. And uh, in case you hadn't read your Bible in Genesis lately, even Methuselah didn't live that long. 969. But he left debt free. So what do you think he's going to do? Verse 28. The same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. J. Vernon McGee says $17. He owed $12 million, got forgiven of it, and he goes find somebody owes him 17. What's he going to do? Well, we read it a while ago. You've read it before. You've heard it before. He grabbed him by the throat and said, pay me what you owe me. What do you mean?
Seventeen, you owe me money. Seventeen dollars. Get pay it up. And just as he had done the king, the fellow servant, verse 29, fell down at his feet and saying, same thing, have patient with me. <coughs> have patient with me. I'm going to pay you all. Now, who was most likely to be able to pay the debt? Well, when you compare the two, the servant who owed this servant, the fellow servant, was more likely to pay. Who'd been forgiven more? The guy that had the other one by the throat. Was he being forgiven? Forgiving? No. He had just been loosed from a debt that he couldn't pay, and yet he goes out and does this. Verse 30, he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw that what was done, they was very sorry and came and told their Lord what was done. And his Lord, after that, he had called him back, called him and said to him, Oh, that wicked servant. <coughs> I forgave thee all that debt just because you desired me to. Should us not also, should, should us not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? Turn over with me to Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 32. Ephesians 4. Verse number 32. So as you turn in there, let me read that last verse again. Should us not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And Ephesians 4 and verse 32 says this, Be ye kind one to another. Be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Uh, to me, that would be the opposite of cold hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Ouch. Ah, but we want to hold a grudge. We want to hold this and that against somebody. Friends, those of us that are children of God, we're debt free. The debt's been paid. May we, uh, as we talk about from time to time, the grace that showed us, may we show grace. The love that showed us, may we show the love. The mercy that showed us, may we show the same mercy. And add to that the forgiveness that, we're, that we've been shown. How many times? <clears throat> A lifetime of forgiveness is what the Lord gives us. An eternity of of forgiveness is what the Lord gives us. If you look back with me to Matthew 18. And as you look in there, I'm going to ask you a question. What if God forgave Marty the way Marty forgives? J. Vernon McGee asked kind of the same question. If God forgave our sins in the same way we forgive others, none of us would be forgiven. But after we have become children of God, 
because we have been forgiven, we are to forgive. His Lord was wroth, in verse 34, and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. A debt that he couldn't pay. But you know, the Lord says, if we don't forgive, we'll not be forgiven. Verse 35, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Sometimes folks forget. But Martin never forgets, do I? Some folks, sometimes folks don't do, but Martin ain't never like that, is he? Well, of course Martin's like that. Of course. And the forgiveness that God gives that lasts for all eternity, that's the same forgiveness that he desires us to give. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you for the forgiveness that comes through the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. And Lord, uh, the forgiveness that we get have been given, may we in turn be given that to others. Lord, there, there's a heaven to gain, and that comes through Jesus Christ, and the hail to shun. And Lord, may we, through showing others forgiveness, be pointing them to you, the ultimate forgiver. Have your way in each one of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.